Okay, um, this is a, a, a unexpected video, but after what I just read, um, I simply had to uh, make a video on this. And it's regarding a so-called, um, if you want to call him a journalist, called Josh Wilden, who works for comicbookmovie.com. And normally, um, I don't like calling out people. I like to stay in my own lane and do my own thing. But um, I had to make a, a video on this from, in regard to this particular character. So I'll call this a rant video. So I don't know how long this video's video is going to be, but or how many people are going to watch it. But um, I'm going to get this off, off of my chest. Now, Josh Wilder, as I said before, he also has a Twitter, um, a Twitter handle, right? Which I'm not going to, um, people can look on it. And now he has me on block because basically I called him out on his crap. Now, Again, I'm gonna try not to swear because obviously YouTube, the, the YouTube algorithms don't um, seem to like that. So I'm gonna try and refrain from swearing in any shape or form. So anyway, he has me on block because basically I called him out on his um, bull crap in regards of um, him being biased, biased towards Marvel. And this is nothing to do with um, for example, the way in the direction of what DC have been doing with with their movies, because again, some of the stuff the movies have been good, some of it have been has been quite rightfully being criticised in terms of um, the production quality of the movies, um, the movies being say being rushed or not having a proper plan thought out planning compared to what Marvel's done, and first and foremost, um, Marvel to me have done the the right direct under Kevin Feige Feige's um leadership have gone the, in the right direction in the sense that a sense that what you with the MCU where they've built it with the solo individual movies then obviously you tie the characters together make sequels and introduce um other characters once you've got the the main characters established so to me they've done the exactly the, the right route in which um DC should have done and for that matter didn't do so it's kind of been hit or miss now for me and i'll tell you a little bit of a little bit of backstory about about me for example and why this kind of infuriates me with people journalists like josh wilden me i'm a i've grew up um a comic book fan from ever since as far back as i could read um whether it was dc or um all right marvel now i can be perfectly honest and say but i gravitated slightly towards um dc mainly because of characters like superman which i know a lot of people did and especially with the comics and also with batman those were the two main staple characters later on after that it was characters like the flash and green lantern and Wonder Woman and Nightwing and the Teen Titans and Superboy, the world, the, world, the Connor Kent clone one, and Supergirl and his, and his many, many uh, other um, DC characters. But the, the the main ones were for me were Superman and Batman and, and, and the Flash of Green Lantern, especially the Hal Jordan Green Lantern. And then later on, with the modern iterations, we, we, you know, like you had the Carl Rayner um, Green Lantern. But then also, I loved um, Marvel as well, like um, um, characters like the Hulk and reading them in the comics and the animated um, sh shows um, that came on during the 60s and 70s. And then you had the live action um, Hulk um, TV series with Bill Bixby. And then obviously they did TV movies as well. We've, we've had um, the, X the 90s X-Men um, cartoon shows and also the comics as well with the X-Men and the Uncanny X-Men. Um, also, also, we've got the heavy hitters like Spider-Man, um, whether it was the Peter Parker or the, the Clone Wars. Now you've got Miles Morales. And for me, I grew up a lot on the, um, on the, um, on the Peter Parker Spider-Man. And I, know I even remember him having the black suit and the cosmic powers and the Clone Wars. Just so much to, to, um, to go from. Then you had... Um, the, um, the 70s was well, short-lived um, Spider-Man series with Nicholas H H Hammond. Um, we had Spider-Man and his amazing friends 
and the, and the 80s um, cartoons and the 70s cartoons. Then we had the Fox 90s um, cartoons. Then obviously with, right, with X-Men, as I've already said, we've had the cartoons, the comics, the movies with Hugh Jackman. Um, there's so much, to, and then we've had, I loved characters like um, Iron Man as well. We had, I remember the Fox, um, that they, they they there were two different series of um, Iron Man, which I've, I've got on DVD. We had, we've had Fantastic Four, the animated series, and obviously the comics before that. Four, Captain America, um, characters like Nova. They're just, um, they're just um, so many Marvel characters um, that you could, that I could name and I grew up reading um, with the different um, artists with Chris Claremont, um, Jim, Jim, Jim Lee drawing X-Men, um, characters like Wolverine, there's so many, um, kind of, um, so many, um, Marvel characters that, you know, to kind of, um, r relate to and, 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 and like, and like, and for me, where I didn't have a kind of a lot, a lot of friends, comics for me were my, way of it, of escaping certain um, tragic things that I was going through in my child childhood. So whenever um I would say I'll get my pocket money or I would or where um or save up when I was old when I was doing a, a little a little, little summer job here here or there I would go out and on on, on the sun and the summer holidays. I'd go out to the comic shops and I'd buy um com old comics, new comics, as I said before, Marvel, DC, and um, you've already seen, like, I think I've done at least three so far um, collection videos of my um, of my comic book collection, and that's just a fraction of what I've got, and I still need to do more videos um, of my comic book collection, and then kind of what you have to understand about my passion with comics is that I've been collecting for near for over 40 years so that's kind of showing right my age and i've had people in my family say to me you know why am oh you're too big for comics why don't you throw them out nobody um you know nobody um you know about comics but i know a lot of people now don't read the physical media comics now because it's easier to obviously watch them the, like the marvel the mcu or the dcu or whatever it's going to be called now and people forget about the comic source of where all these characters kind of um, come from, and there's no way that I could, um, I could part away from my comic book collection, um, which I've been collecting over the years. And there's some of them that I've even read yet, and graphic novels, and I couldn't bear to kind of part with, um, with like my comics that I've, I've collected. Some of them are actually worth money, some of them aren't. But regardless of whether or not they're not worth anything, very, very they are important to me in a sense of um of why i collected comics and why i like comics it, obviously you get s some stories that are better than others you get some classic stories like the, the like the death and return of superman you've had the spider-man clone um clone clone wars there's been so many and then obviously various different artists that have inspired me because i used to love drawing and one of the first things that I used to draw, I used to draw were superhero cross, um, 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 characters, whether it was ones that I made up, I made up, or ones that I liked, whether it was Spider Man or Hulk or whoever it was or Wolverine. Those, um, that's what inspired me to want to, draw, to want to draw, even though that, even though I wasn't, I didn't have the complete talent in being able to, you know, to make it into a living, but. That's what inspired me to want to draw, because comics. And as I said before, going through the stuff that I went, what I went through through my childhood, comics for for me were a very, um, f f it, it was the very thing that helped me escape, and through all the hardships and all the pain that I was going through as a, as a, as a child. So when I read um, articles um, um, by Josh Wilden. And him starting off petty fanboy comic book wars on Justice City to get clicks on comic book on that site comic book comic book Marvel or as I call it. 
Um, I find it absolutely disgraceful that he's not even being called out. Now, his latest article, which I'm going to click to what he's done here. Um, I'm trying to find it now. Because I'm actually so angry that, that, you, that you have. Yeah, his, his latest article that he posted seven hours ago is six reasons why Warner Brothers Discovery DC extended universe 2023 20, 20, state is doomed to fail. Now, does that sound like somebody who is a passionate comic book fan to, to you? How many people do you know who love reading comic books, regardless, regardless if it's DC or Marvel, would want to write an article wanting something to fail? And the thing is, he's put in six reasons. Now, these six reasons are based on facts, what he thinks, on his arguments. Now, he's put, and then I can totally destroy him. Now, he sits there and puts, for example, that Shazam, Fury of the Gods, didn't, didn't, didn't do very well. Fair enough. He's not wrong there. Didn't do well, didn't do well at the box office. However, Marvel Phase 4, which has currently been running, hasn't exactly been sitting and pulling up trees either. We've had Black Widow, didn't do very well. And also, we had the problems with that was going on. We've had Eternals. That didn't kind of pull up any trees. We had the, um, the four um, Love and Thunder. Or I think it's called I've got wrong time. That, didn't, that, that was decisive. We've had Doctor Strange 2. That's been decisive and, didn't, and wasn't kind of great. We've had Ant-Man... And the Wasp, Quantumania, which I've just watched, and I was about to do a review of it until I saw this article. That underperformed, right? And how I can prove that how two-faced and how much of a hypocrite he really is, is when Guardians of the, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was released, was um, on the 3rd of May, which was, which was my birthday. And then he put up an article saying... Um, now the um the Guardians of the Gal Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three has put um the Marvel MCU Phase Four back on track. Now, if Phase Four was doing that well, why would Volume Why would Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three be putting the MCU back on track and back to its best? That would be that would be implying that the movies prior to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Were, were, weren't on track and weren't doing very well. Because if they were doing very well, making money and being well received, you wouldn't make an article and make a comment like that. Now, a true comic book fan like myself and probably many others who hopefully will see this video wouldn't want something to fail. I made a video early, earlier on in um, a couple of weeks, a couple of days ago, in regards of people wanted the fa fa um, fast X or fast ten or whatever, it, whatever you want to call it, wanting that movie to fail so that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three could carry on making its money. Because obviously, if you release more movies around um, the release of that movie, it is whether or not the movie is good or not, it's going to take a chunk of. of other movies profits which is why um distributors of movies don't like releasing their movies at the same time because they know it's going to eat other movies will eat into its profits the fact that you've got people um and, and he was one i think that did that same article basically implying to people not to watch far sex or any other movies so that guards of the galaxy can carry on making tons of, of money so in other words you want movies to fail just so that the marvel movies succeed that's an absolute disgrace and i will happily sit there and i'll call out jo i'll uh, absolutely call out josh wilden and say that he's a fake comic book fan because he's not a comic book fan comic book, real comic book fans want comics 
to succeed. I remember a time when I was a kid when if you liked anything comic book related, you were classified as being a nerd. I remember liking comics and reading comics and people used to sit there and make fun of me or even for other friends of mine who were into comics, regardless of Marvel or DC. People still used to make fun of me for liking comics. And even if you walked around wearing, say, like a Superman jumper or a T-shirt, baseball cap, people used to sit there and make fun of you because... It was so, because you loved comics and it was something that you found passionate. Now, it's a whole different ball game now, now because now it's totally acceptable. Everybody now walks around wearing a superhero baseball cap or a, t -shirt, or a superhero t-shirt on a hot summer's day. Because now it's fashionable to love comic book memorabilia, whether it's simple, whether it's t-shirts or jackets or baseball caps or whatever it is or if you've got a flash ring or whatever or a batman cap like i've got or a marvel t-shirt but there was a time when it wasn't fashionable people used to make fun of you and bully you and now it's now been appreciated and now being acceptable and not being made make you being made fun of for loving comics whether it's DC or Marvel. I remember as a kid marveling at um, Su um, Superman, the movie, right, with, Chris, with Christopher Reeve. With People forget that without that movie, we wouldn't have any of the superhero movies that we have today. It was the template of the modern, of the, the, the superhero movies that we've got now. Or whether it's DC or whether it's Marvel, Every one of these movies is inspired by Superman the movie. What I really loved about the about that Superman the movie and Richard Donner and Christopher Reeve as Clark Kent and Superman is that he really made you believe a man could fly. And of all, yeah, if you watch the movie, you watch Superman the movie now. Obviously, with superhero movies now, they use CGI and they can do all these special effects. But you can't sit there and tell me that Superman the movie now, Superman the movie, still looks as fantastic as the day it, it printed off the presses. Superman the movie was absolutely phenomenal. That's why every actor that they've tried to get to replace the Superman, it's been so difficult. Because Christopher Reeves played the role so well. He really, you really could, really could believe that. The, and even if you, I would urge anybody to watch the making of Superman one, and watch how they did these special effects and what they had to work with, and what how now we have it easy now because we've got computers and CGI and all things that now can make it look so simple. But back in those days, they had to improvise, come up with new techniques to make a, um, you know. To, to make a character like Superman believable. And then obviously you've got Christopher Reeves, who they said it was a pilot. So even the way he's he moved and f and the way he turned and the way he was flying, well, fake flying, obviously, you really believed he was Superman. And then him having to build up his body mass so that he could have the physique of Superman. And we forget about all this and where we kind of came from as real comic book fans. And then you look at, obviously, like, in the 90s, we had the, um, the Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire. For years, they were trying to get Spider-Man um, done right. And at the time, obviously, with the trilogy, I know people make fun of the third Spider-Man movie. But Spider-Man 2 was probably one of my all-time favourite Spider-Man movies. And probably still is my favourite. Of all the incarnations of Spider Man, we, we've had Iron Man with Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. was born to play Tony Stark. That movie, for me, is MCU's version of Batman Begins, in my, in my humble opinion. Absolutely 
brilliant movie. And I, I, I watch it at least maybe every four or five months. I re, I rewatch that movie. Iron Man 1, absolutely a phenomenal movie. Captain America with um, um, with Chris right, right with Chris Evans. Obviously, previously played the Human Torch in the Fantastic Four two movies. Absolutely embodied the character of Captain America. And obviously, we eventually got the Avengers movies. M movies where obviously they they um, obviously they all teamed up and then eventually we end up getting Avengers um Infinity War and Avengers Endgame and we look how far we've come we have things like obviously the X-Men movies which I know the third X-Men movie wasn't exactly kind of great but I remember seeing the first X-Men movie for the first time with Hugh Grant, sorry Hugh Grant, Hugh Jack, Hugh Jack, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, and we got the second um, X Men movie. We've had, we we eventually would get X Men First Class and Days of Futures Past, which was a absolutely fantastic movie. And obviously, it kind of didn't go right there, but you know, nevertheless, we got these um, movies, and we've come such a long way, and. I never would have dreamed that, whether it's from Marvel or DC, that we would get so many um, comic book um, movies on the big screen. And, and not just comic book fans, but everybody, children and people young and old watching these movies. I never would have dreamed that it would have been part of the staple um, big summer seeing these movies and uh, and and you know like people taking it these things for granted and then you see people like Josh Wilden who to me the guy you know he can sit and do, do he can sit and block me and have his fans come after me and do what he wants but the guy is utter trash half the stuff that I'm um that I, I don't know how I really feel about the guy it just I, I'm I'm holding back and even being polite because again the YouTube algorithms but yeah, I'm calling him out. Josh Wilder for me is not a comic. He's not a comic book fan in any shape or form. Wanting something to fail to me is childish and it's pathetic. And I'll sit and I'll say this in this video. To me, Josh Wilder is a pathetic excuse of a man. Don't sit, I don't, even if he sat there and tried to read out to me, which he's never going to do, because I said before he has me on block. He's not a comic book fan. And it's people like this that make my blood boil because they spoil the enjoyment for everyone else. We've had so many comic book movies, comic book TV shows. Some of them have worked, some of them haven't. But it's the fact that we're getting them. And then you have this pathetic prick of a man that has to sit there and, and then put out this pathetic article because he knows that what it's going to do is that it's going to get clicks and hits, which is what it's going to do. And all written in the, and then the people in that comic, um, the comment section haven't got the ball, haven't got the Balls to call this guy out for his ball crap because they won't because they'll act like good little shills and so, and then start sucking him off because they have not got the bollocks to call him out on his ball because they won't do it because they'll sit there and behave like good little good little boys and do as they're told and this guy is. Absolutely pathetic. How can he? How, how can he call himself a comic book fan and call him um, and call himself a journalist? If you want to sit and kind of call him that, even the way the guy writes his grammar, this man is supposed to be a grown ass man, and even his grammar and the way he constructs his words, it's like it's a it's like it's a twelve year old. 
Now, I'm not on, now, my video is not scripted. This is just me being passionate and speaking from the heart. So it's not scripted in, in what I'm, in what I'm saying. Everything is just coming out, out of my mind and out of my heart and how I feel about his pathetic little article. Now, he's, he's making way more money than me. He's bigger than me. He's got, he's got more fame, fame than me. Probably getting all free tickets to see movies. Something that I probably will never be able to do. And it's not out of jealousy. One of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel, aside from um, some people were telling me to do it and I was inspired by other people, was because I wanted to share my passions with other people and maybe to, to reach out to other people and maybe inspire people as well, how people have inspired me. And a lot of the stuff that you see on um, my YouTube channel, I'm paying for, I've paid for it out of my own pocket. Now, I don't have the money to go out there and do the expensive rev um, reviews of big products like some of these big U YouTubers do. And maybe one day I will get there. Maybe I won't. But one of the reasons why I did all these things is because it's passions of things that I like. Video games. As long as I can remember... I've loved video games. I've loved playing them. That sense of enjoyment, and then you get different types of genre. RPGs, platforms, fighting games. There are so many different genres of games to play. And then you've got different companies that make different make the different video games. Some good, some, some bad. Then you've got the different, um, obviously, you've got the different companies, whether it's Xbox, Sony, Nintendo. They all have their own individual flair in what they had to bring to the table in, in terms of the game, in terms of gaming. But nevertheless, it's video games. So you see video, me doing playthroughs of video games that I like. Sometimes I like them, especially if it's a new game I've never played them before. Sometimes I don't, but you always will get an honest opinion opinion on how I feel about these things. I've started to do one or two music reviews of albums that were important to me and what touched my life and what made me in um, listening to those particular albums and my my childhood and the, the particular albums themselves, the artists themselves. And why they meant a lot to me. Music again was a, again with the, some of the tragic stuff I was going through in my childhood. Music for me again was that another um, form of of escapism for me. And obviously, you have different genres of music that can, as I say, music um, um, can be an important. Um, thing if you're feeling sad and you put your favorite album or you put your favorite song on and it can really be uplifting and especially that i used to dance a lot when 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 i was a kid so that's what you're seeing um you've seen a couple of music stuff and i've still got more to do again comics which i've already talked about you'll see you, you've seen me seen some of my comic book collections or new comics that i've been uploading and then you've seen me do previews of particular comics Again, comics were and are still my passion. Movies. You see me do movie reviews of, um, not necessarily of new films that have come out, but various different types of movies. You see me do DVD and, for the, for the most part, Blu-ray unboxings of movies and of TV shows. Because movies, again, were another, for me, or another passion, whether it was sci-fi, action, thrillers, comedies, they all brought some. All these different genres had something to bring to the table. Again, movies and TV shows such as Twenty Four, Smallville. You've had things like Thundercats, Transformers, um, things like now Fringe, Grimm, um, The Flash, Arrow. 
Um, there's so many ver ver pre pretender. There's so many that I could list. And there's so many of these things that I have in my collection that I can say that I'm proud of. Because again, movies were and are still are my passion. You see my st my statues, it's mostly DC, but I've got Marvel as well. I would love to sit there and be able to collect a lot more um, statues, but obviously you're limited by space and limited by money. But a lot, of, you see me do food reviews. Again, that's mostly to do if I've been inspired by other YouTubers. But a lot of the stuff that you that you see on my YouTube channel, it's things I'm not doing it because I'm being paid or I'm promoting something. But I do it because I enjoy it. These every one of the things, the different types of things that you see on my channel, it's things that for me that I personally love. I don't do things to clickbait. I don't do things to call out people of oh, this video, technically I am. I don't do things to sit there to start fanboy wars just to sit there to get clicks and views. That's not the guy I am. What I like to sit there and like to think when people watch my stuff is you're seeing a passionate person with showing and sharing his passions. My honesty on products, whether it's beauty products, movie reviews, game reviews, or if I'm testing out a drink, or a new um, food, I will give you my opinion, not someone else's, or I'm being paid or being told to say that, you're getting my honest opinion. And for me, you cannot buy honesty. You can't buy passion. It's something that you have to feel in your heart. And if you sit sitting there and you're just doing something for the sake of it, there's no passion involved in it. You're just being a mindless drone. So when I see articles by Josh Wilden, and this, and this isn't the first one that he's done. This is why it gets me so upset and it makes my blood boil. Because people like him, they are not real fans they are not real comic book fans because real comic book fans don't want things to fail all these things people sit there and think that with marvel and dc that there's beef going on between the two companies you know that's rubbish because artists come and go from both companies Sometimes some artists are commissioned to work for DC. Sometimes they're commissioned to work for Marvel. Same thing with the rioters. They all congratulate each other. There's even been, I know there was been a couple of sto um, stories where DC and Marvel teamed up. You had one in particular, I remember, with Spider Boy. And he basically was Superboy and Spider, -Man, and Sp and Spider Man merged. They all want, even with the, the movies, you have people like Kevin Feige. When DC movies have done well, they've congrat he's congratulated them. And then it's worked vice versa. Right? So when you're sitting there and seeing these fake... Um, Fanboy wars, which these people are just fabricating, it's absolutely ridiculous. Now you got to sit and analyze yourself. Why is Josh Wilden doing this? Now the cynic in me will turn around and say, "Well, maybe he's working for Marvel and he's been told to sit there and do that." Now again, we know that's not true. You've had a lot of actors, especially in the movies that have worked on Marvel movies. And they've also worked on DC movies. James Gunn, obviously as we know, did Guardians of, Guardians of the Galaxy. And was doing his movies 
for Marvel. And now he's obviously he's doing um obviously he's he he's he's ahead of the DC of, of the D of the DCU now. So he's in charge of that now. So and then when he was sitting there and then did the suit the suicide squad, he was also doing Guards of the Galaxy Volume 3. Did you sit there and see any issues between Warner Brothers or a Marvel and Disney? No. They just got on with it. He's now working on the Oswald, the new DC Universe. Obviously, he's gonna he's writing and directing Superman Legacy. Alright? And he's been telling um the, the first chapter. Um, was it um, that he's going to be doing for the new DCU, Gods and Monsters? And he's talked a lot about what he's planning to sit there, and he's going to, and obviously he's, what he's going to be doing for this first chapter. But then, but then he's also been working on. He was also working on Guards of the Galaxy Three. So, what does that tell you? Now, let me just try and wrap up now because. Got on um, for, um, long enough. Or was it ranting? And again, I don't know how many views that this is guy. If this is gonna get, probably not very many. Because again, I'm not a big YouTuber. But let me just for form I'll say that with with Josh Wilden, he needs to take a really good look at himself in the mirror. The fact that he put he sits there and puts six reasons now. Why six? Why not seven? Why not eight? Why not nine? But six reasons why it's doomed. So he not so unless he's got a DeLorean, he's travel through time and he knows that it it's gonna fail. It's like having a child that you put through school. You want your child to be the best that they can be in what they want to do. It be it be like wanting them to fail before they've even started. Now, how stupid does that sound to you? Somebody that wants st something to fail. Now we know the real re the, the real reason why he's doing this because he wants the shields, the Marvel shields, to sit there. To start sucking him off. He wants the other people to sit there to start arguing with him. So in the meantime, what he does is he builds up attention. Which is the real reason as to why he's doing it. Why he just sits back and watch the people either either agree with him or fight against them. But in the meantime. He gets lots of clicks and lots of views, which is exactly what he wants. This isn't a proper journalist. He's nothing but a pathetic free was it fee useless of a human a human being. I have seen other YouTube, I've seen YouTubers who do a much more professional job in what they do, and I'll give example of somebody that I will I highly recommend. There's a YouTuber that goes by the name Emergency Awesome. You can clearly tell that he has a big passion for movies. He has a big passion for comic book news and movies. This, right, this is the kind of guy who I would recommend in watching. Although he doesn't write articles like what Josh Wilden does, this to me is how... Proper journalism is done. Especially when it comes to the, the comic book genre, which is what I'm into. Now, you can have somebody 
who you just purely into Marvel. Same way that somebody's just purely into Xbox or Nintendo or Sony, and that's fine. Because and that's the, if that's if they just want to sit there and stay in that lane, that's fine. But because at least you know what you're getting into. If that site, there is even some YouTubers who I've seen who have just focused on DC. Like one person I know, he's called DC TV, right? And it's just mainly anything to do with DC, whether it's the TV shows, anything animated, or even the movies. Again, that's fine. Because that's what he's chosen to do. And the difference being is you know what you're getting into. If you're somebody that is just pure Marvel and that's all you like, you're not going to sit there and be interested in that in his channel. If you're somebody that is just purely in, into DC, then you're going to be. But if you're somebody that's both DC and Marvel, of all the person only focused on DC, you're still going to like it because at least it ticks one of your boxes. So you know what you're getting into. But when you've got a journalist like Josh Wilden, who's working on a site called, and I quote, comicbookmovie.com, it should be focused on comic book stuff. If you know you're going to be biased either way, then have the bollocks to be honest about it. Don't sit there and put on your site that you're a comic book movie site, but you're clearly showing your bias towards Marvel. Because you're not because you're being biased. And they sh that site should be doing its, its due diligence when you have a site that is called that. And you're not doing that. You're just sitting there. Totally focused on Marvel. And making articles. On wanting DC to fail. And saying that they're doomed. That is to me. Absolute. Pathetic. Journalism. And I wouldn't even call it journalism. Now again as I said in the beginning of the video. I'm not letting off Warner Brothers or DC because they have, as I said before, they've done a lot of mistakes. And I may even do a video in regards of that and what I think they should be doing. And, and hoping that they've turned the corner. But regardless of the mistakes that they may have done, for example, Justice League. We could do a whole video on that if people are interested. It doesn't mean I want them to fail. We've seen what's happened with Xbox, where a lot of the Xbox games, the exclusive games, have been coming out poorly finished, red for. We've seen Game Pass, where people have complained about the quality of it, and how they're lagging behind PlayStation, and even Nintendo. Especially when it comes to quality exclusive games. But regardless of the fact that Xbox have screwed up. And it's their, it's their own fault for doing it. I don't want them to fail. I want them to succeed. Because the more competition you have. The more that you have to, that you have to offer to bring to the table. The better that us gamers will sit there and will we'll get to play. We can only hope that, for example, that Microsoft, Xbox, Microsoft, learn their lesson. But it doesn't mean that I want them to fail. Red Ford is a mess and it shouldn't have been released. In terms of the quality of it. Although you can play free on Game Pass if you've got it. But it doesn't mean that initially that I wanted the game to fail. Even though it has done because obviously it's, it's been really half bodged up. But it doesn't mean that initially that you want the game to fail. And that's not the right mentality to have in life. 
Doesn't matter whether it's comic books, video games. The mentality in wanting things to fail before they've, be before they've begun is the wrong mindset to have in life. Because if you have that negative mindset in wanting things to fail, that's how you'll live your life. You won't be successful in life. Life will pass you by. You have to have a positive mentality, even when sometimes when you're going through the darkest days. Wanting things to fail or wanting other people to fail in life, even when it's your worst enemy, is not the right way to go. Even when it's some... I've had friends, ex-girlfriends, that have used me, discarded me like a used toy. And it hurt me like someone putting something through um, I, I'm a shop, a knife through my heart. And I could have sat there wanting revenge, wanting these people to fail, wanting these people to suffer how I suffered. And even though to what they did is wrong and they're never going to apologise or have a conscience in the way they treated me. I just wouldn't want, I wouldn't wish anything upon anyone. I've had stories about people in my family that have had cancer. Other diseases or people that, that have died. It's coming up to now, on the 20th, it will be, it would have been my cousin's birthday. Um, my cousin that died a year ago. You don't know when something's going to happen to you. I've gone through personal health issues myself. Still suffering from them. Other family members. But you can never ever wish. A failure or doom upon anyone. And I know I'm kind of taking that. From, away from. Josh Wilder's article about wanting things to fail. But the point I'm making in life is. That. You cannot want things to fail in life because it becomes a set thing. And it's the wrong mentality to have in this in this life and in this world because it's a short life. Before you before you realise it, your life could be gone in in a blink of an eye. And that's why I've chosen that. I've, I've even the way that some people have support that have treated me. It takes a big, instead of sitting there and wishing bad things upon other people, wanting people to be doomed and to fail, to suffer. It takes stronger courage to walk away. Leave them in their own lane. Live your life. Don't worry about what they're doing because they're not worrying about what you're doing. You live your life and be and try to be the best person that you can be. Be a, better per be a better man or a better person, should I say, than what they are, rather than wanting things to fail. So, uh, again, I just want to wrap this up now. When I'm sitting there and I'm seeing this pathetic article that Josh, and I might use that as the thumbnail as well. So when I sit there and I see people like Josh Wilden showing his true colours to the mast, on how you are wanting something to fail. And then as I said before in the comic book section, you're seeing these people agreeing with him. It just shows you how much of a stupid human being he is and how much of a stupid human being they are for falling for his crap. As I said before, I'm not going to turn around and say that I'm the world's greatest comic book fan. I'm the best ex um, comic book fan. I'm the most knowledgeable ex um, comic book fan. I'm the, the world's biggest comic book fan or I'm the world's biggest comic book expert because I'm not. But what I can, what I can tell you is, and this is me speaking from the heart and being 100% honest with all of you that are watching this video, and I'll leave you with this. For me, comic books are my life and they always will be. 
regardless of whether it's DC or Marvel, I love them all. Ryan out.